Well, hello there, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Um, this is my third time trying to record this. My recording settings are being very strange and giving me just complete black screens instead of actually recording in a video. So hopefully I fixed it. Anyway, in this video, wait, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to generate random numbers on your scoreboard using command blocks and structure blocks. So I want to give credit where it's due. I first saw this basic idea in a tutorial by Emerald Fire. Link is in the description below. Um, so he basically realized that using the structure integrity um, function of, of structure blocks in 1.10, along with the always active impulse behavior of command blocks that came in 1.9, you can create random values in your scoreboard extremely efficiently. So to show you what I mean, if I press this button, you'll notice in the right hand side of the screen, there is a score called random, and my score is now 45. I press the button, now it's 247. I press the button, now it's 236. Every time I press this button, I'm going to get a random value on my scoreboard between 0 and 255 inclusive. And so, I'm going to show you how this works. So, like I said, go check out his tutorial below. Um, he did a bit more with it, but I'm just going to go over the basics, so maybe it'll be a little easier to understand for those who might not have understood his tutorial. Um, so yeah, so how this works is by using binary numbers, which should have been obvious when I said the values are between 0 and 255, because that is the range of one byte. So you'll see here I have eight command blocks, and each one of these represents a bit. So that's eight bits or one byte. These are saved in a structure, and the way you do that, you can check out my structure tutorial to learn how to save structures. Um, but in this case, what I've saved are command blocks rather than buildings. So if you right click, you'll see there is these are set to impulse and always active. And what that means is, when these are placed in the world, they immediately trigger, perform their actions once, and then don't trigger again. Which is really good for us, because that means we can, ca we can um, cause them to add their value. Because um, remember, these are bits. They represent bits. So they can add their bit value to the final number one time, and then not again. So, yeah, so that's how they work. They add powers of 2. So here, this is bit 0. 2 to the 0 power is 1. So it adds 1 to the score. Here is bit 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. So it adds 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. 2 to the 4 is 16. Then 32. Oops. Then 32. Then 64. And then 128. So those are all the correct powers of 2. Um, that correspond to each bit, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And they just add that to the score, and that's all they do. So when we power this block, the first thing that happens is the score is reset to 0, and then these add their values in because it triggers the uh, structure block here, which loads this structure in, and so every time a block from that structure is placed, it'll add its value to the score. Which is fine, but then why aren't we just getting 255 every time? Because these load in, and each one should add itself to the score, and so it should go up to 255, right? Well, that's because of this feature, the structure integrity. So this is set to 0.5. By default, it's set to 1. But if we, see, uh, if we leave it at 1, you can see what happens. Now, every time we press it, it is in fact set to 255. And that's not what we want. So what this does, this structure integrity, you set it to any value, and that is the chance for each block to be placed or not. So if I set it to 0 0.5, that's 50%. That means that each of these blocks has a 50% chance to be placed and a 50% chance not to be placed. And the ones that aren't placed aren't going to add their value to the score. And so basically the ones that are placed represent ones in the binary number, and the ones that are not placed represent zeros. And so that's how we get our random 
uh, values by you know using that property of you know letting it be placed or not placed as zeros and ones and then multiplying times the appropriate power of two um, and so then we get these random values so that's how that works it's really simple but I don't know if I would have ever thought to combine structure blocks with command blocks in quite this way so props to Emerald Fire for that um, one thing to note this seed leave it at zero so it's zero by default but just make sure you don't change that to anything else because this seed is what it starts with when it picks uh, you know when it decides which blocks to keep it starts with that seed for its random numbers so if you leave the seed at zero it's going to be random every time you load it if you set the seed to something else though then it's going to give you the same random number every time so if I set this to one let's say and then I press this button I get a value of 126 and every time I press this button it's going to give me 126 because it's going to be using the same seed if you set it to zero it tells Minecraft to pick its own seed every time which makes it random so now we get 13 1 95 218 etc so yeah pretty simple how it works hopefully this video explained it a little easier for people who might not have understood emerald fires video but go watch emerald fires video because he did a lot more with it so he uses this technique to generate a number but obviously this value goes between 0 and 255 or if you go up to like 31 bits it'll be 0 and like 65,000 something I think it's 65,530 something yeah no sorry that would be 32 bits uh, it's half that so whatever 32,000 something either way um, it starts at 0 the range always starts at 0 and sometimes you don't want that sometimes you want to pick a random number on a different range so in Emerald Fire's video he uses a bit of scoreboard arithmetic to take the result of this kind of random generator and then convert it over into the right range. So check out his video to see how he did that. Um, but just for basic random number generation, this will do just fine. And you can use fewer or more than 8 bits. Um, I just did 8 bits because a byte is such a common value. But you can make the structure only a single block and that'll be a one bit randomizer which will give you zero or one every time if you do two blocks you'll get between zero one two and three uh three blocks will go you know etc etc it just doubles every time so so whatever your range is you can adjust for that um but do not do more than 31 bits <coughs> oh excuse me um don't do more than 31 bits because apparently the integers stored on a scoreboard value are internally stored in four byte integers four bytes is 32 bits so you can't go more than 32 bits but you also shouldn't go more than 31 bits because the values in a scoreboard are signed which means they can be uh, positive or negative and uh, the way signed bits work in computers is that um, or sorry signed values work in computers is that one bit is used for the sign so in other words if that bit is zero then it's a positive number if that bit is one it's a negative number but um, that means that even though it's 32 bits one of those bits is just for the sign so the value itself is only 31 bits so what I'm trying to say is don't use more than 31 bits for this but you can use any number from 1 to 31 bits and it'll work just fine just make sure that you're doubling this value that each one is adding each time so it's 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 next one would be 512 after that it'll be 1024 etc just keep doubling that number for each next bit um, and you'll get however many bits you want so yeah and um, just to show you how efficient and quick this is to run I've got this here which is a hyperclock now hyperclocks were common in 1.8 and before 
in the command block community because we didn't have repeating command blocks. And so the only way to make command blocks trigger every tick was to use a hyperclock. And the way a hyperclock works is you would set the block that you want to trigger to a redstone block and then immediately with a command block set the block back to like stone or wool or anything that's not redstone. Uh, and so what that would do is um, you, you could repeat that constantly every tick and it creates 20 tick per second clock. Now in this case we actually need to bring those back because even though we have repeating command blocks that trigger every tick we don't have repeating structure blocks that trigger every tick. These do need a redstone signal so we bring back the hyperclock. So in this case, it's a 20 tick per second repeating command block um, that's setting two blocks below it to redstone, which is this one. And then that leads into a chain that sets three blocks below it to sandstone, which is, again, same block. So it's going to alternate between redstone and sandstone every tick. And every time it turns to redstone, it's going to trigger this random number generator. So if we turn this on, and we check in the sidebar, you'll see all of these random numbers just constantly generating 20 times per second, and it's fine. Now if you want to see what that does to the performance, you can open up your F3 menu, and you'll see now I'm around 80 to 90-ish, probably an average of like 90 frames per second, uh, give or take. Um, and there's a lot going on in this world as well, um, so it's not the best FPS to begin with, and I'm on a laptop, but the average is about 90 frames per second. So if I turn this on, you'll see it goes down to about 80-ish, uh, 85-ish, so 80 to 85, right? So you lose, you know, it, it fluctuates, but... Yeah, it's about 80. Right, so basically you lose about 10 FPS, at least on my computer. Um, but that's actually not ridiculously bad in terms of lag, considering something is happening 20 times per second. Um, so yeah, and also in most cases, you're really not going to need to generate a random number 20 times per second. Like, if I wanted to, I could put this on a, um, oops, I could put this on a comparator clock, which is slower than a hyper clock, uh, exactly half as slow, so it'll be 10 times per second, and to do that, we just set up a comparator that leads into itself, and turn it on, and turn it on, and so in this case, In this case, the FPS is actually a little lower, probably because of the particles. So if we go where you can't see particles... Yeah, so that actually is, is less efficient to use it that way. Which is interesting, actually. Oh no, okay. So, let's redo that test, because apparently my FPS has just dropped on its own. So we're at about 80 FPS. Yeah, we're at about 80 FPS to begin with. And if you run this, you know, we drop to what looks like about 80 FPS on average. So, yeah, so if you do it like this every two ticks, um, then you're fine. I mean, it doesn't really do anything to the FPS. So, yeah, whenever you need to generate a random number, this is probably the best way to do it now with Minecraft 1.10. So, yeah. Again, check out Emerald Fire's video. I couldn't have thought of this without him. And until next time... Nope. Until next time, keep randomizing and keep redstoning.